This is Lemmy with RevZilla, joined yet again by AutoZone aficionado Spurgey, as well as the Terror on a Triumph, Joe Zito, bringing you another episode of High Side, Low Side. Now, today we're going to be talking about, uh, I think, kind of an interesting topic, because we're, we're all over the map on this one. We're talking about motorcycles and soul. Before we dive into that, just keep in mind that there is going to be a podcast version of this as well. Make sure you type in RevZilla to wherever you get your podcast, and you can listen to this episode in its entirety. Alrighty, so we were kind of kicking around some ideas here, and I think Joe actually came up with uh, our present topic, and he wanted to talk about why it is I think that people tend to attribute the characteristic of soul to to a motorcycle or character. And it's not with everything, you know. Motorcycles are kind of a special case, I think, for for a lot of folks. So l let's get right into it. I mean, what is soul when it comes to motorcycles? Like, is it, it what's I character? did a little research. Oh. on the internet, and I found these, uh... <laughs> you can always believe what you read on the internet. Right. That's he he googled <laughs> in his truck five minutes before we shot this. Um, these were pretty interesting. So the, the definition under soul that I found appropriate was the quality that arouses emotion and sentiment, which I feel is true. The character says capable of portraying an unusual or eccentric personality. Obviously, a motorcycle can have that too. So I don't really think that they're always both applying to one machine, but a machine can have both or can have one or the other. When you're looking at soul or character, I think whatever it is, whatever that, you know, undescribable thing is about a certain Je motorcycle, there's yeah. just something about certain bikes that turns you on, right? And it's not the same for everybody. You and I could be looking at the same bike and I could be like, there's no way. Ugh. And you'll be like, I love it. Okay, so I'm gonna, I guess I'll play the pet ant as I normally do. Um, so I, just clarify for me, so I understand the question as well. Are we talking about motorcycles having soul or motorcycles having a soul? Soul, yeah, they're, just having, just they're, having, just they're, soul. they're having soul. Yeah. It's just soul. Yeah, Yeah. not okay. like, uh, you know, the spirit of my triumph or whatever. It's yeah. just something about it that, that you just can't define. I, I gotta be honest, I'm gonna sort of come at this, I guess, a little bit differently. Like, I don't really tend to, anthropomorphize motorcycles that much. I mean, I, you know, when, especially when I'm writing, I'll, I'll maybe mention a, a, a motorcycle's personality or its character, but for the most part, like, I don't think of my bikes as very humanoid or even animal-esque. Like, so they, they I, think, I think for me where it started was um, when I had the Triumph, you know, the, the, the T100, and I would take the cross-country trips with it, it was you and the bike. And I think it was almost like what I would imagine a cowboy would feel about his horse. Like, it's you and your little buddy. Like, like you need this thing to keep going. I, I see you laughing, but like, I mean, like, I'm gonna put oil in it. I'm gonna feed it gasoline. I'm gonna make sure the chain is lubed. I'm gonna keep it, I'm gonna, I'm gonna take care of it. And in turn, it's gonna take care of me. It's not gonna yeah, die on like me. It's gonna keep going. it's like a relationship. You yeah. depend on the machine. It's a relationship. When you're yeah. like 100 miles into the desert in the middle of nowhere, and you know if that bike fails because you neglected it, you're beat, you're both beat. Yeah. You know, so I, I do agree with that. You know, I think that when you put the time and the effort into a machine, it pays you back. Now, I'm, I'm, gonna, I'm playing devil's advocate a little bit here, but... Um, we know that at this well, point. Right, yeah, I know, we, I know. <laughs> but but when, it, when it comes to a horse, I mean, you're talking about another sentient being. It is demonstrably living, whereas... Uh, do you feel the same way about your toaster in the morning? Like when you guys fire up your toast, do you get like this jammed up over your toaster? Right. Yeah. I mean, <laughs> if you came down and saw me riding my toaster in the morning, I'm ready. Be... <laughs> what are you doing? <laughs> riding my toaster. But I just mean like every morning, are you out there like sweeping out the crumb tray? Like, man, I got to. If I take care of this toaster, I mean, it's going to take care of me out there. Very... Butter, jam, rye, white. <laughs> I do wheat. love my bagels. <laughs> Somewhere there's a very passionate toaster collector that that definitely can get behind that. A lot of the bikes I've ridden, you know, like I've been fortunate enough to ride a lot of different kinds of motorcycles. I worked at a classic motorcycle restoration shop for years. I owned my own classic motorcycle shop for a while. Um, and then, you know, obviously coming here, I get to ride all these different bikes. There's a lot of the time where I get on a bike, a new bike that may be exciting on paper, and I take it out, and the thing is just so boring and flat. Even if it has 150 horsepower and all this technology and everything, and I take it out, and it's almost so perfect that it is like a toaster. It is like a microwave. It's just an appliance. It's just a tool to do a specific job. Even like freshly restored classic bikes don't really have that much soul just yet, but I think it takes some time for, for the machine to kind of develop that, that soul and kind of, you know, it takes you a while to get in tune with that kind of thing. The next natural question that I have to ask you is, do you only deal in unrestored toasters? <laughs> 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 Sorry, Spurge, go for it. <laughs> 
<laughs> I think that for me, you know, like my hardtail bike, my black and gold bike, you guys have seen it. I built that bike, rebuilt that bike in 2005, you know, so like we're coming up on 15 years with that bike in its current state. Before that, it was a clapped out piece of crap. And then eventually after a year or so, I got all the quirks worked out of it and it started to be pretty reliable and I took it on a lot of different runs and went through all different kinds of weather and different mechanical roadside things and then I don't know I developed this relationship with this bike and it's you know I've had a lot of bikes come and go over the years but that one I don't think is going to go anywhere. Would you say so when you acquired that thing you know we I don't know if we have a picture we can bring up it was a pretty sad sack. It was a total turd. A, a highly modified like chopped awfully would you say that bike had soul and character before you got it? Sub question, after you started, you know, working on it, did you erase or did you wipe away any solar character that bike may have had? I think that to the person who maybe had the vision to put that bike in the state the that it was. That is so diplomatic. You know what I mean? You know, like everybody's got a different way to that build a vision was bike. a look through peyote haze. Just <laughs> so you know. I don't even know if it actually ever ran in that state that mm -hmm. it was in before. But yeah, I mean, that's a really good question. I think that w when you start to mess with a machine and you really put a lot of love into it and time and effort, you know, it kind of is reborn again in into that new state. And then you have that relationship with that bike because you could build a bike or put a bunch of time into a bike and I could take it for a rip and I might not be in tune with that. I might not be getting yeah. what you get out of it. It sounds like you're saying that a bike's not necessarily born with soul and it can maybe acquire it, or maybe it actually has to be installed. <laughs> like maybe you have to put soul into yeah, the bike, yeah, like to top up your soul tank. Um, <laughs> I just want to say, because before we get too far down the road of like new versus old, because I disagree with Joe a little bit, I think there's plenty of new bikes out there that no, have soul. I'm right, you're wrong. It's not about right Welcome to America. <laughs> I think the, um, the difference between like a motorcycle and a toaster, a motorcycle is not an appliance for me. Like a motorcycle is a way of life. Like a motorcycle is something that like, I'm dropping money on this. I really care about all of my bikes. I mean, there, it's, a, it's a relationship. All right, so I, I want to ask you guys another question too. Can stock bikes have soul or do they have to be modified? And then, so there's a, there's a tertiary question on this. Can you guys each give me a couple of examples of bikes that do have soul and a couple examples of bikes that don't have soul? So stock bikes, I think absolutely can have soul. And this is again, where I kind of differ from what Joe was saying. Like, I think you can go in and get a, a bike off the showroom floor and it speaks to you. And the example I'll use. They installed the soul for you. They did. It was, it was pre-installed soul. But right no, at the factory. When, Dealer package. Uh, when I first rode my 1090, it was a press bike. And I was riding a heavily modified Tiger at the time. And I got on the 1090. And within the first hour, I was like, oh my god. It was, it was the way the engine, it was the intake, it was the sound, it was the feel, it was the way it vibrated. Like, I love my Tiger, but it was so smooth. And, and a lot of people like that about it. I mean, you're a Tiger owner, right? Um, there's a lot of people that, that like the refinement about the bike. But for me, the rough edges on the 1090 were like, I need this right now. It just, it just, it got me so much more excited than the Tiger ever did. All the, the, the handling and the specs aside, just the feel of the bike and the way that it really just was like, this is me, this is it, I want it, you know. Dude, when you're on it, like from 7,000 RPM on up, like you can hear this thing breathing. Sure. Mm -hmm. And that, and that's like, that's what we're talking about, right? There are those human yeah, aspects. I can so hear it breathing. I don't know what that is what we're talking about. Because what you're describing right now, to me, it doesn't sound like soul. You're describing characteristics of that motorcycle. And they're ones that you like. But well, that's, me, what, that's what I said in the beginning. Like, I think soul and character kind of blends when we're talking but about I, right. I, I, I think so. to me, that would be more of character. Uh, yeah, you're just for, talking for characteristics. characteristics. You're, just, you're just describing what it's like to ride that bike. But I think it's the characteristics that give the bike soul. It's the characteristics that speak to me. So you're saying it's the those, 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 The characteristics are the same to everybody, right? The characteristics of that bike, whether you ride it, he rides it, or I ride it, they're the same. But it's the well, way no, that... I, if I were riding, it'd be much faster. <laughs> True. But yeah, but I get what you're saying. But I mean, it's, that, but it's, but it's the, I'm sorry, but it's the characteristics that are the same. It's how those characteristics speak to you right. as to whether or not that bike has soul to you. We're kind of on the same page with that. I think that there's, there's certain bikes that really have a lot of character um, that might not really be for me. Um, but I think, like you said, like, you know, I just got this new dirt bike and, and I just automatically felt like we were kind of like in harmony. You yeah. know what I mean? Like the bike just works so well. And um, it's kind of like autonomous, you know, when you get on a machine and it just feels really natural and, and just the way it sounds and the way the power comes on and, and the way the brakes feel and the suspension feels and it's just like, man, you know, you get on a bike and you're just in tune. You know, like, I don't know whether 
that could be considered, you know, like character or soul, but it's, it's something about it that's intangible. Like your relationship with the bike almost immediately like works. Um, there's other bikes that I've ridden that like I can't stand. Like I, I want to get off of it right away. So can a bike have soul even if you don't like the bike? Is that a thing? Yeah. Yes? Yeah, yeah maybe it's just not for you. Okay. Does your new KTM have soul? I think we're getting there. I think, you know. Okay. So, so actually, so you're installing it. No, but, no, <laughs> but, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> but I think that is definitely that is definitely a possibility, right? So I'll, I'll back up to my old Bonneville T100. When I bought that bike, and even now when I go ride stock 2005 to 2007 Bonneville T100s, they're so vanilla, they're so boring. But mine, I love mine. And I would take mine over a brand new, clean, shiny one any day because I've, I've modified it to give me exactly what I want out of it. And now when I get on it, it it's just like it's mine. But you have history too. But I, and I have history with it. So that mm -hmm. bike over time, buying it, did it have soul in stock form? No, it was actually really vanilla. It was just kind of like a, a boring nothing. But as I've learned what I've wanted to do with it and I've changed it and I've now I thumb the starter, and I'm like, it is still my favorite bike in the garage. Now, if I if I bought the same bike you have, right, and I modified it, I put the Hagon shocks on and the seat you got, and I, I had you got it. Shocks. Sorry, sorry, yeah, but it, whatever you got in there. Um, if I did that, right, and I, I duped your bike, A, I guess would that bike have some soul, and B, would that, would you? Would not care less, couldn't care less about that bike. Because it doesn't, it doesn't have, it doesn't have, this at all. it doesn't have any of the je ne sais quoi that he didn't install the soul in that one. Exactly. Okay. So, the, so it sounds like <laughs> m maybe to me, it sounds like what you guys are saying is that the 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 soul really doesn't necessarily come from entirely from the machine. It sounds like you guys are the machine's putting something out, and you know you're putting something into the machine, and sort of the soul's maybe in the middle. It's how you it's how you interpret it. Maybe you know. Okay. I think for me, like when I'm when I look at that bike. Um, Man, we've just been through so much together. Mm -hmm. and, yeah, that's like, not, and that's maybe that sounds weird to say, but like we have been through so much together. I mean, so many people I talk to, they buy a bike, they ride it for a couple of years, they move on. Yeah. You know, but that one bike, and I've done, I'm guilty of it, but that one bike. Whew, well, yeah, I mean, I I look at my black and gold bike after having it for this long, and it's it's showing its age. You know, it's it's a little bit beat up. But I look at each scrape and dent and scratch and all this, and I have a matching scar on my body from that particular incident. You know what I mean? Like, you know, I, I blasted a hole in my hip, crashing that thing really bad, like almost right after I got married. Um, I low sided it in Maniunk hot dog and like a goober, you know, and like scraped up my leg and scraped up the pipe. Like there's so many things on that bike that like, Man, you know, like I look at it and all those scrapes and dings and dents might not mean anything to somebody else. They might say like, oh, look at that turd. You know, that sure. turd doesn't care about his bike. But to me, it's like that thing, like those, those kind of imperfections like add value to me. <sighs> Man, I, like, I, I, like I, I can kind of appreciate it, but I also, I can't ride an ugly bike. <laughs> just, you do ride an ugly bike. Yeah, but but <laughs> that's, that's hurtful. No, but, you uh, like, like, but you tell me, like your knucklehead, right? And your knucklehead is probably like my favorite bike in your garage. Like. Man, that thing is so cool. You don't think that that has soul or character? This is why I'm surprised at your stance because you, you do have, have so some, many cool bikes that are like some such one-off, unique. Yeah, but like I mean, you, I don't, and you built that one by hand, like. Yeah, but I like I don't I don't think of those as having soul. They're just I mean, if anything, the the parts have been imbued, I guess, with with the stories of the people who had the the bike before I did. But I like to me, the magic's not in the bike at all. The magic there is from the people who had it. You know, like that that knuckle came from a very dear friend of mine, Dick. And um, I mean, I, it's important to me because it's his bike. It's not important to me because of the bike. I mean, it could be a Trail 70. I wouldn't care. Like mm -hmm. it, it, it's just. It, I guess it's not. But you about don't think the bike. That, that you don't think that that's part of what we're talking about? Yeah, I think the machine like the is lineage, a reflection of all that. It's, it's a reflection, yeah, I, I think reflection is a great word. Like, it's a reflection of the years and the miles and the, I mean, you could have, if, if you had to choose between a uh, Dick's bike or like a museum piece quality knucklehead of the same year, which would you rather Dick's, have? Dick's bike. Exactly, and I think that's what we're talking about. It's the character and the years that, that Dick put into that and then knowing that he kind of like, you know, languished in his garage for a little bit and then you came and you brought it back to life and then you got to show it to him. And I mean, there's a story there. There's, there's something that, that that's unique a about that specific motorcycle. Absolutely, but it's, well, but it's not specific to the motorcycle, I guess. You know, it could have been a guitar, for instance. Like, you, you know, you got a bundle yeah. of guitars. I mean, it could have been, could have been anything, I guess. But, there, well, but, just, I, but I would agree with that. There are certain guitars that I have. I suppose, but in, in my head, it works out. You know, the soul is in Dick, 
right? And like the bike's just like a reminder that, oh yeah. Dick well, was, you make a good Dick, point talking Dick, about Dick the guitars, butt. his guitars and stuff like that. Like I'm not really an instrument kind of guy, but I could see that where it's like, you know, the story of how it was acquired and maybe the history of where it was before, you know, like I, I do think that people have these relationships with these things that they're passionate about because of, you know, how they found each other or like, yeah, you know, what it took to make it another. work sure. and things like yeah, yeah. that. Can you give me some examples of bikes that do have soul and bikes that do not have soul? You know, you look at something like the the seven the seven forty nine and the nine nine nine, and everybody hated those bikes when they came out. And you know, and I I always loved them because they yeah. were so They're weird, like raw, and rough around yeah. the edges. So like those are some bikes that I think personally have soul. Uh, I would say bikes that don't have soul, like a Honda Rebel. You know, <laughs> wait, wait, wait till the viewers I and know. the listeners just you, yeah, let's that Spurgeon at Rezilla.com <laughs> load them up with all the emails. Yeah, you're being, <laughs> yeah. They, Choose another popular one, Spurge. Yeah, you're, you're totally no, but like, now. A Honda Rebel is like a tool, right? Like you get on that and you learn how to ride and then that's it. Like like a Honda Nighthawk 250, like that was a bike that I learned how to ride on. Oh, it wasn't like a bike that I like, think that's curious. So go back to go back to the people aspect of things. I bought a Rebel brand new when I was a kid and um, go back to our review of the Rebel. I will never get on a Honda Rebel, whether an old one or a new one, because we had them side by side in the review. I will never get on one of those bikes and not think of that. I mean, we rode all through the canyons. And yeah. we, you know, we had a, we had a good time oh, shooting that review. That was probably one of the most fun times that we had together, because we're both in these two little bikes and we're ripping around and scraping pegs and acting like idiots. Yeah, but we're, you you just said that, you know, like whatever, it's an appliance, you you learn to ride and you move away from it. Like I, for me, yeah, I guess the soul not in the motorcycle, but it's, it's it, it, every time I get on one of those, it'll be a reminder of, of what you and I were doing together. So if you and I would have kept, if you and I would have like brought one of those bikes back that we had for that review, like that specific bike could have developed some soul around, you know, the character that you and I dumped into it. But like it would have had to have been like that specific one, like uh, walking into the showroom and, and getting a I'm, Honda Rebel I'm off the showroom floor. I'm not that slavish to it. Any Rebel will remind me of that. I mean, until they change yeah. the body style again, it's totally unlike the, either of the Another previous Another 30 years or so. <laughs> right, exactly. Um, for me personally, the, the bikes that have soul to me are, are ones that have kind of like reciprocated my love and effort into getting them going. When I ran my shop, my, my shop specialized in pre-1980 British and American bikes. There were times where somebody would come along and say like, oh, I need a tire change or can you put some pipes on whatever. And, and I had a friend bring by uh, a twin cam and it was cool looking and it sounded cool and all this. and. And after riding so many different other bikes that were a little bit more gnarly and rough around the edges and, and taking this bike out, and I hammered on it, man, and it went from zero to 100 in a few seconds, you know? Like, it was just, it was almost too perfect. It was almost too good. It was, like, kind of flat and boring to me. Yeah, Even though it was really that. good at, at what it was designed to do, it just, like, didn't turn me on, sure. you know? Totally. Like, so, apparently, Rebels and soft tails don't have any soul again. <laughs> Feel free to write in there, folks. <laughs> so I'm going to ask you as a question that is, uh, I'm asking it really from my own viewpoint, but maybe you can answer it more generally. Why do so many people, i.e. you, <laughs> find it so distasteful to find that another rider doesn't believe in this concept of soul? So like again. you guys have both, like you guys have treated me right now, like like the the the, the like the dumb guy, you know, like where you're like, oh man, he's nice, but he's just so stupid. I'm honestly just surprised, you know, because you value yeah. classic bikes. You're in the AMCA, um, you know, the there's little parts of bikes that are valuable. Like I've old seen you buy things. bikes based just on the character of them because like you saw what went into them you saw the love that was developed around them you're like well i gotta i gotta keep that bike going or i gotta i gotta yeah. i gotta make sure that that bike doesn't you know fall by the wayside or like man, nothing I, to do I've with seen... the bike everything to do with the builder <laughs> but that's but that's part of that 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 that's goes into the bike at some point that's the true. bike owns that you know like my god that purple Suzuki thing that you bought that Yeesh. one time. Oh my <laughs> lord. Awesome. And you were so excited. You brought in like the book of like all the bad documents. About how not excited I was like about it. And he's like showing me this and I'm like, you spent money on that. Like your poor wife. It's beautifully built. Like, it's oh my beautifully God. built. It, it rethinks the entire concept of oh, what a motorcycle no, could be. No. Uh, but like but like you see the value in that. You see the character. The bike in that. where like, the exhaust pipes were actually the frame. He was so excited about that. He right. was so excited. Very but weird. We're seeing think, another one like it. <laughs> But I think that could, I mean, I guess for me, like, I don't understand 
Um, I, I don't look at you like you're like you're you're dumber. You're on the outside. I guess for me, it's just a little bit of disbelief that you you wouldn't see something a little yeah. bit more. I think you're being deliberately contrary. Ooh, <laughs> I think you mispronounced that word. Um, I, I yeah, to me, I guess it's it's more about the the man than the machine. I, is ultimately what it comes right down to. You know, like if I had had an old clapped out race bike from some super famous racer, like it would be cool to me not because I have an old clapped out race bike. It'd be cool because like oh, some somebody raced this and did something awesome. I don't, I don't know. All right, well, I think that should wrap us up for talking about motorcycles and soul, as is our custom Character. here on High Side, Low Side. We have achieved nothing even resembling a consensus. We have <laughs> not explored this topic as thoroughly as possible. But, but if you want it even more thoroughly explored, remember to check out that podcast. So uh, I think we're going to call this one a wrap. We'll see you next time on High Side, Low Side. For Spurge, Joe, and uh, me, Lem, we're out of here.